BMW 5 Series at its best between these two vehicles here, 1,155 horsepower. BMW M550i, the M Performance model, against the true M model, the BMW M5. Can this one here, the M550i, keep up with the M5? And is the M5 the extra price worth between 30 to 45,000 euros or dollars between these two vehicles? Well, some buy a whole car for that. But what's the real difference here? Let's go with the exterior, the BMW M550i. Here, since the 5 Series facelift, the grille leads over to the new headlamp styling here. And adaptive LED are standard for this one. And then optional laser light here with the blue accentuations for even more high beam performance. The front grille already very sporty with the vertical fins here, huge double kidney. At the moment, they are closed for more wind efficiency. And they can be opened on demand than on the inside. And the lower part already with a sporty touch. But you soon see that here, the lower part is where the differences happen between the M550i and the true M model, the M5, which is right here. And here we go, the M5, same headlamps, but then the front grille is different. It is always open and has a different styling right here, so it looks even more aggressive. And then the biggest change is here in the lower end, wider area, wider opening. So this is then the, you know, the most prominent styling detail in the lower area central and also left and right when you compare both vehicles. This is, by the way, also the competition model, 25 horsepower more and also some other additional features then. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome here, the engine part, 4.4 liter V8 for both vehicles. They do share the same block, but they have different parts. You see it already here from the outside in the front area. Remember this one and we'll soon take a look at the M5. So they do also use different parts. Acceleration difference is a little less than four seconds in the acceleration fear here for the M550i and just over three seconds here for the M5 model. So yeah, around the half second difference, zero to 100 kilometers or zero to 60 miles an hour. In horsepower figures, it's 530 versus 600 horsepower or 625 horsepower here in the competition model. Both all wheel drive, but the M5 has the option in the infotainment system, you can choose it also to go rear wheel drive only on demand. And here you can obviously see that they do also use different parts you can literally see that from the outside. So somewhat similar, but also a little bit different. I always wanted to have one of these, these computer key fobs, and I really always wanted to have two of these, and now I have it. <laughs> so here you can always see if you have close the vehicle, for example, this would be really important to me, or the range, um, or the, you know, you can set on the AC and something. It's actually cool and also usable, practical information, because the color says here, it's. Bernina Grey Amber versus Frozen Bluestone Metallic. And this here is the Bernina Grey on the M550i. It's a metallic color. And then the Frozen Bluestone Metallic is a matte color. You also hear that. I really love matte colors. And in that way, it's also really stylish. You also maybe know the, um, the Grey Magno color by Mercedes. This comes very close to that one. However, here, the new Bernina Grey available with the facelift is also really striking. Which one do you like better color-wise, by the way? Isn't that great to see here next to each other both with the rear? BMW, by the way, calls their offerings to the customer that you can now pick like EV, plug-in hybrid, or petrol engine, now also in future for different models. They call it power of choice. But this one here is rather, I would say, choice of power. <laughs> what about the powerhouse exhaust? It's beginning with the M5. True exhaust, big diffuser here. This one is really real exhaust. And even no job for the auto fuel fake exhaust police here in the M550i because I mean, there's this beauty on the outside, but you see the real exhaust comes right there and it just basically covers it on the outside. So I would not call this one fake. So I think also a very elegant but yet sporty solution and let's say a slight diffuser style. So from the rear, definitely the M5 Sportier. But I find new tail lamps really beautiful. They are also in that way, since the facelift has a more modern structure. And look at that here, a small spoiler here for the M550i and also in vehicle color. 
whereas we have a contrasting color than here for the M5. With 4 meters 96 or 195 inches, the length of course is the same, but small nuances and differences here. 19 or 20 inch wheels for both vehicles, but then the tires are wider for the M5. So in the front we have 275 mil and in the rear 285 mil. So in the front that's 30 millimeters wider and the rear 10 millimeters wider than in the M550i. And also styling elements, we have the air curtain right here in the top part, this air curtain element also, you know, design-wise here in the top part. This is placed a little bit lower with the M550i and here side mirrors have you know, this additional aerodynamic element right there. This looks a little bit more spectacular. And since the tires are wider, so extremely wide, 285 mil in the rear, we have this, you know, additional, uh, you know, cover here. So this also, you know, by law, actually. Then the M550i has the air curtain in the lower area right there. This looks actually more spectacular in a way, I think. Then the side mirrors, more normal style, also in the vehicle color. However, you can also get different choices right there. Also 20 inch wheels for this vehicle here today. But here are the normal brakes, already bigger, whereas the M5 also gets the carbon ceramic brakes, but that's also still an option. And the extra price for these ceramic brakes alone, 8,500 euros or dollars. With the competition package for the M5, you not only get 25 more horsepower, which is, you know, but here, the carbon fiber roof. This brings down the center of gravity because on the top part then it's lighter, but yeah, that's the official reason. And the real reason is, yeah, looks cool, man. <laughs> the trunk area we only show you once. It's the same for both. And here we go. The length is about one meters 15 or 45 inches and you can easily also house a cabin trolley here in the vertical way. So very well usable. Of course you would need to go for the touring version if you want more flexibility. But that's not available as an M5. Now to the interiors and door closing sound first. Mm, awesome, that sounds really good. First the M550i. We have a dark styling here for that one today. Soft materials right there. Then you have an M550i entry batch and also already the M steering and the sportier design in this case also with the heated function as for seats by the way with the beam level 5 series you get a new facelifted sensor tech seat in black beige or brown this is really cool high grade leather red with a just great quality perforated structure however this seat is not available here for the M models neither for the M550i nor for the M5 you get a sportier seat right there and in Europe we can also get a sport seat for the M550i in fabric this however the end between option and in the US you only have that choice here at the moment great if they would also introduce that sensor tech seat here for the performance models Let's get inside and seating comfort is actually quite good. I mean, you're in the 5 Series, is a full-size sedan, as needs for my taste or for European taste. And find a good seating position here in one with a 6 or 6 with 1, enough headroom left as well. Interior overview, set the image line to purple, so you can differentiate the cars here, the M550i. Both M Performance and the True M model get the bigger screen setup, which is otherwise an option, 12.3 inch left and right. Also updated with a new facelift on the, you know, the infotainment system here, also Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support both now. Steam, once again, the M styling and the digital instruments when you turn on the engine, the RPMs go counterclockwise and both have some kind of special styling, but it's a good, actually a good overview. And on the infotainment system, for example, easy to control here, for example, car settings, nothing so much special here with the M550i. Also touch, of course, so it's relatively easy control and Apple CarPlay integration. Oh, this, this here, um, the, the map here of the Apple CarPlay also looks quite nice. And this is the CarPlay integration really all the way over the screen. Interesting here also in the lower console right there, this is the climate, um, climate menu and yeah, really great to have these ones here, the manual climate knobs, double thumbs up. Thank you for having them and also manual volume knob. So this is the way to go. And then different styling elements, decal elements here. And in the front, we have the inductive charging pad and adaptive cup holders. And this also difference, the M550i gets the classic shifting lever. 
back or reverse in the front and then you pick the driving modes right here. This one will be really different in the M5. Head up display, nice option for both. And an element I don't want to miss, the BMW Wings style here for the interior lighting in the top. We used to see the also an exterior on BMWs, these times are gone. Glad to have them still here. And I once put myself here in the rear. As a tall adult, no problem. Four tall adults work headroom wise and also knee room wise here when I am driving. Not plenty of useless space here. The seats are quite thick actually. Yo, sick yo. But overall also a nice and comfortable position in the rear. And now the M5. We have a bright styling here today, which is of course a really nice color combination, especially with exterior and interior color, which is really corresponding in a way, I think. M5 competition badge. Right there, the steering wheel more or less the same, but we have additional control stages and then the M1 and M2 button where you can individualize your driving settings and have them as hotkeys. The seats here are having the same base form and then they have some other nuances. First of all, different color choice, cool bright styling. However, this is only in the animal skin pack again and this M5 badge can also be illuminated then. And yay, seat belts here with a special M colors. Seating is the same, however here the interior is a little bit different. First of all we have a different color scheme, but you can also get that then for the M550i. But here the instruments, when I turn on the engine, so they have special M instruments because you can also pick the different M modes for example, or also have then the M setup. So these are the M specific things. And here in the setup you can see you can then pick actually what you want to have for your M1 or M2 mode. And this is also a way when you, for example, turn off the ESC. So wait a little bit. Here we go. And then we can go back here and then pick the two-wheel drive mode to basically cancel the all-wheel drive. But this is always connected with ESC off. So this is only for closed circuit or parking lot <laughs> and so on. For safety reasons, most of the time, keep it with the all-wheel drive. Oh, blue ambient lighting, that's typical Thomas style. And the special things are rather than here in the lower area, different shifting lever. It's an automatic shifting lever, but has, let's say, manual style because that way is reverse and that way is driving mode. So it's a mix of manual and automatic from the feeling. Here on the top part, you change the shifting characteristics, talking more about it while we drive the vehicle. And then here these two mode switches first of all from the setup where you can individualize the hotkeys and then m mode is where you can deactivate or you know draw back assistance systems overall some kind of technical overkill you have to get used to it a little bit but this is also supposed to be like this tech machine welcome to thomas's active driving performance lounge <laughs> with the comparison and we'll start directly with the bmw m5 most sensation I'll put it here to the M mode, then driving assistance systems are drawn back. And I can also put here the M custom modes, then everything is sportiest, but I put it to the automatic shifting, so we have the best performance there. But I set it here to the shifting up latest, so this will be really, really interesting. We're starting at about 30 kilometers an hour and let the hell out of this vehicle. That's 200. <laughs> 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Oh my God. Wow, well, in this, uh, you know, special sport shifting mode, it's already been like bam, 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 hammering in the gears. What a performance. And acceleration here, just over three seconds. Really amazing. Um, yeah, and yet you can also go back to this manual shifting one, then you always shift yourself and the car stays in the gear even when it hits the rev limiter, like this you hear it. No shifting up, then it drops down the RPM of course sometimes because of power curve. I just want to show you that you have this mode where the car sticks in that gear no matter what. And so shifting yourself of course is also a lot of fun. Wow. So much fun and of course really great brakes here. We have the optional carbon ceramic brakes. Whew, this is really a re adrenaline rush. Well, now we're in the tunnel. Let's lower the window. Shift down. Nice, nice, nice. So cool. Yeah, indeed, great sound. In the US version, the sound will be even better. 
in the EU, the our exhaust nodes are already way more restricted. Oh, there's a Benz Cabriolet coming up, R129, 129. It's actually a very interesting generation there, especially when it's not overtuned or something, when it's more kept original. And here, of course, with our 625 horsepower, no one can actually overtake us. At least we just let people overtake. Interesting, by the way, that the suspension here in the competition model, even seven millimeters lower, and you can use it as an everyday driver. This does work. However, you do feel that the suspension is definitely stiffer than in the, for example, M550i. It is bearable, definitely. You have some comfort losses, but as I said, you can have it as a daily driver, no problem, actually. And, you know, the special axle setup here, also by BMW M, wow, make the car so sporty, especially in the corners. Yeah, that's really, really cool. You can also set the steering feedback individually, by the way. And, whew, yeah, when you're coming to a halt here, a little moment of silence until the next acceleration. By the way, here in the shifting modes, it's set here at the shifting lever, here now, 30 kilometers an hour, fourth gear already, but really smoothly and early shifting up and so on. However, if you set it to this, you know, third level or even already second level, car is all automatic shifting down a gear, keeping it in the lower gears and also when you just cruising and so on, definitely, you know, keeping the low gear and shifting up very, very late. So if you want automatic shifting, but the sportiest way, then you would set it here to the third level where all the white, um, you know, signs are filled up. Here also seen on the shifting lever. The contrast to that would be when just one line is basically filled, then it's more you know, yeah, relaxed shifting. So in a way then you don't even have to change the driving modes. You can also, you know, stick in non-M driving modes, have everything activated and just shift the characteristic by the car, literally by the shifting mode here at the shifting lever. That's also what it's meant to do. And now one more acceleration with shifting ourselves. <laughs> oh, that's, that was 80 to 180. And you can see the ref limiter also in the head out display in that mode. That's of course really, really helpful and so you can precisely time your shifts. Am I on a racetrack? No, it's German Autobahn, but sometimes it's like, it's like that, but of course, safety first as well. Always keeping a distance in the, to the front of us when you're driving really fast. Yeah, that's the most important thing you can do. Um, it gets quite loud here also at higher speeds. Um, that's notably. Looking forward if that's different in the M550i. Um, yeah, something like the AMG and the true M models, they have maybe some weight savings and so on, and then not most focus on sound dampening and so on. But here at 150 kilometers an hour, that's then, you know, more silent. But you also want to hear something of that engine. Wow, and the cool thing is here with high displacement, eight cylinders, then you can also sometimes accelerate in higher gears. Of course, they won't give the best performance, but I sometimes do that just, you know, to basically experience the old school big engines and see like, oh, there's still something happening, although we're in high gear. And then when you're in high gear, of course, you have this very low frequency, sonorous sound, which is reminding you of, yeah, that's what it used to be. <laughs> and now agile driving up Autogefühls peak. Let's see how the M5 performs here. I mean, we're in the, I'd say, full-size sedan segment. So there's a lot of weight we carry around with us, but due to the suspension setup, great steering and the nice feeling and so on. Yeah, this car still feels somewhat light. Of course, at some point you can't deny the weight anymore. That's of course a natural thing. Um, steering feel, by the way, I think could be it could be a little bit more feedback. That would be cool. So it is overall good and also feels quite natural and so on. But um, they are like the, for example, the Audi setups a little bit better the, in, the, in the RS models. So here, especially in the, you know, in the low degree area, this could then be 
yeah, a little bit stiffer or feel, feeling a little bit more progressive, definitely. But here this car handles so well, doesn't lean or roll at all. And remember, the M5 does not offer the rear axle steering that is available with the M550i. That would be something to consider, definitely. And I'm also looking forward how the M Performance model then, so this one here, the true M model, the M Performance model, let's see how this one um, performs in here with the rear axle steering. And what's also interesting here, when we put the DSC off and then configure M drive, now I'm in the two-wheel drive mode, you have to have some practice doing that, so most often you don't do it while driving. And for example, then here, two-wheel drive mode. <laughs> I can do this then around the hairpin corner. And the thing is, the two-wheel drive mode is connected with ESC off. So it's not recommended to do that on public roads. Here at very, very slow speeds, of course, and was looking ahead. Um, so always safety first. But the car is capable of doing so, so if you have closed circuit or something, you can still do that. You still have the possibility. But bear in mind, this car has so much power. And remember, on the very first driving event of the initial launch or here of the M5, a lot of experienced guys were literally crashing the vehicle in this mode. It just has so much power, you know, and you have to be able to control that. So most of the time, I would also really recommend leave it in the four-wheel drive mode here, but what a fun driving experience. Now the M550i, we put it in the Sport Plus mode and also to the left in the Manuelle Schaltgasse. Listen and repeat, Manuelle Schaltgasse, <laughs> like the manual shifting alley. We also start at 30 kilometers an hour, it's, you know, more or less same Eight cylinder block, but of course changes. Can it keep up? Keep up with the M5. Let's go. And that's 200 kilometers now, 125 miles now. Wow. I mean, that felt really, really good. Also good all-wheel drive performance, rear-wheel bias. The suspension is awesome. It's a little bit softer than with the M5, definitely, but handles so well here also at high speed. You feel, especially com uh, in comparison to the com competition package, that this one here also sits a little bit higher. But this one here can do both. What an, what an excellent compromise, you know, and you can drive that sport at the same time you put it back in the normal shifting mode or you go back to the normal comfort mode. Then the car is more silent, more relaxed. I feel also it's a little bit more silent. Maybe it's also a thing of the carbon fiber roof in the M5 or something that doesn't insulate that well. That might be a reason for that. Brakes, we don't have the carbon uh, ceramic brakes here, but they're still quite good in performance. Not you know that powerful though. It's not that you would miss any braking point here or something. So the difference between two the two vehicles is actually bigger than expected. And of course here, this one is the better overall price performance car and so on. That's already clear before doing the review, you know. But both are a lot of fun actually, but there is really huge difference in the whole attitude of the two vehicles. That is really surprising to, surprising to me. The M5 always says like attack, 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 even in normal driving mode. And here you have two vehicles in one. Here in the comfort mode, it's more or less like a normal BMW 5 Series running straight on the motorway. Everything is relaxed and so on. Let's compare the sound here. Sport mode once again, shifting down. Let's see, silence. Also nice ASL in the sound. Of course, not that crackling as we have in, in the true M5. The all-wheel drive, or like the all-wheel, always all here, rear axle steering. <laughs> this is really remarkable. At lower speeds, then turns in the opposite direction in the rear wheels and the front wheels. And here at higher speeds, it gives more stability as it turns in the same direction. And it really feels very well. This BMW adaptive suspension, one of the best suspensions there is on the market. It's so good that you don't miss an air suspension at all. That it's in a way somehow also even better than some of the air suspensions of the competitors. 
this is an awesome vehicle. The overall package, of course, you know, is better with the M550i. And the thing is really, soon also the agile driving part is to come up that we can compare it, you know, with the, um, you know, up driving up the hill. <laughs> when you're driving this here on the motorway and you're running straight, it will give you more comfort on the long run. So if you more seek this compromise between sportiness and comfort, then this here is the vehicle for you. And the more you think about it, and the more you look on paper, and the more you appreciate comfort, then you will surely land, you know, surely end up with using this one here. But then again, when you are freshly in the vehicle, just start driving, and the emotions take over, then you think, Shouldn't it be the M5? <laughs> yeah, that's always the thing, right? One more acceleration when we are already at speed. Plop, that's also, also 80 to almost 190 kilometers. So, yeah, speed-wise, acceleration-wise, it's really hard to pick the difference. Yes, the M5 is a little bit faster, definitely, but I mean, that V8 power is always there already when you have the M550i and such a great suspension. Definitely suspension setup is more likable here in the M550i because it considers the comfort without losing control or handling or something. Yes, the M5 is stiff and will perform better on the racetrack, but on the road, definitely the compromise, the setup here is better for the M550i it will still be very tricky. This is not over yet here. At the moment I'm in like, yeah, for what purpose, you know? Um, if I seek more comfort, probably this one, and maybe like you should go for the M550i, but you still want the M5, maybe something like this. Let's drive this one up the hill and see how it goes. Now putting in sport mode plus here with the M550i and driving up the hill. Oh, this then sounds somewhat familiar from the V8. And rear axle steering here, if you have the dynamic handling package in the US or the Adaptive M Suspension Professional in the EU, then you also have the rear axle steering and this is really helpful at lower speeds. The rear axle comes around a little bit more, also reduce the turning circle. So a lot of driving fun here this feels then as it would have a shorter wheelbase. So in that way, by that option, makes the M550i better to handle for parking in and out and also is in that way, especially in very narrow corners, a little bit more fun. However, you are always stuck with the all-wheel drive in here. You still have great acceleration and when you are in that sport mode and the RPMs are turned up high, really flawless. The suspension is definitely softer, a little smoother. So the M5 gives you more aggression, also a little bit more sound. This one here, even when I'm at these speeds here, just a little smoother also from the sound dampening and so on, but performance wise, wow. Also really great. This goes so quick forward. And when we are in the hairpin corner here, yeah, on the one hand, we don't have a rear wheel drive option. On the other hand, rear axle steering, and I feel that this, you know, makes the rear coming around. But I mean, yeah, this corner here is some symbolic for the difference between the M550i and the M5. This one, you're already really sporty, but the M5 is just the pinnacle of sportiness than here for the 5 Series. So way more aggressive. This one does deliver you sporty driving fun, but you don't immediately come into this harsh adrenaline rush, you know? This one here is more or less a relaxed sportiness with a lot of power. The M5 says, you know, like, let's go, let's attack. Wow, this was really exciting. Which one would I take home and which one would you take home? Really looking forward for your comments. The thing is, I mean, exterior-wise, they both come very close. No doubt about that. And also depending on the color and the styling and so on. The matte color of the M5 today is really, really awesome. Yeah, I really love that. But I mean, both colors are absolutely striking. From the interior, the M5, little bit of an adjustment overkill. Maybe that could have been, you know, done a little bit easier because it's not, let's say, a straightforward user interface of how many things you can control there. On the other hand, 
you have the possibility to control a lot right there. Another big technology difference is that for the M550i you can get the rear axle steering. So yeah, you know, in this dynamic handling package in the US or the adaptive M suspension professional in the EU, this is really a crucial difference because it makes handling the car, parking in and out and so on, and also U-turns, turning circles, so much easier in everyday driving. And also at lower speeds, it gives a lot of agility, faking a shorter wheelbase. This is a lot of fun to drive a car with a rear axle steering. However, it can feel somewhat a little bit unnatural. And then the M5, you know, feels more purest, more yeah, direct in the sporty. So I can also understand that they did not go for that. Performance wise, of course, half a second faster for the M5 in the acceleration figure. Both are really powerful on the motorway. But more the difference is the suspension setup and that the M5 always says like, you know, let's go, let's attack. And to me, it was really surprising that the difference between the two vehicles is bigger than expected. Before that, I mean, price performance winner is of course the M550i. That was clear beforehand. But to me, I was also expecting that I was clearly say, I'll definitely take this one and goodbye. But I really have to say, the M5 is more fun, more sporty fun on the cost of a little bit of comfort. So the question is what you like, what you prefer. Of course, the extra price is not really justified on the one hand. Hmm. But if I could pick one right now, maybe it's more like either go for the top for the M5 or then go for a real price performance model. My favorite BMW 5 Series model I would also recommend to you is the 540i. That's the six cylinder already. Get it as rear wheel drive. On the inside then the new SensorTech face lift seats in, for example, in beige or in brown to have a nice color contrast. That would be the ideal price performance tip for today. But we these two here, I love the concept better of the M550i, but somehow the M5 got me hooked. <laughs> so what about you? Tell me in the comments which one would you actually go for and also tune into more comparison episodes for example BMW M4 versus Audi RS5 and we have more BMW 5 series content as well. More other versions, color and trim, the sensor tech seats, plug-in hybrid drive. Also tune into this video there and see you there.